I'm very pleased to uh, to uh, to talk to you about this this work, which is not my most recent work, but I thought it was uh, relevant for this uh, for this workshop. So it's about sequential prediction, and maybe uh, the first question I would like to to ask is: Is anybody familiar? Who is familiar here with sequential prediction and uh, um, and expert settings? With expert advice, so a lot of people already. So because okay, since I was not sure exactly uh, what was the audience, there is a part uh, at the beginning where I, I do a, a recap of uh, very known things. So I hope uh, not to to bore you too much. Uh, and uh, also, um, <coughs> okay, so there is a second part in my talk which I may possibly uh, possibly skip it depending on the time. So I'll see. So this is a uh, work with my uh, former PhD student Elmi Dissad, who's uh, currently in Central Supelec and actually from a leave of Central Supelec currently to work at uh, Coast at the Coast University, in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so uh, what is the topic of uh, prediction with experts? So here's a, a, a cartoon slide. Imagine we you have uh, some question that you you want to uh, to answer sequentially, so predict the weather tomorrow or the the stock market, and you have many experts that can have their own information and methods, and they can go give you so some prediction. So you have a panel of experts, and you don't know actually what's the at the beginning what of they are good experts or not. So here's my cartoon. So this is a panel, your panel of experts. <coughs> so maybe you can recognize some of them, or I don't know. And just from the look of it, of course, you can just anticipate that maybe in my panel, some experts are better than others at predicting, and maybe the advice of some other experts is uh, possibly not so good. I let you uh, decide which ones. But of course, in practice, we assume that uh, we have some uh, some uh, some experts in as black boxes. And at, at, at the beginning, we don't know at all who, who, uh, which experts are going to, uh, to be uh, <coughs> good or not so good at the uh, prediction task we are considering. So each expert individually is giving prediction and I, as I told you, they are experts for whatever we want to predict might be more or less skilled, but you don't know that in, in, uh, in advance. And the question, the general question is uh, how uh, can we make the best use of uh, this panel of experts and their advice? <coughs> In, uh, in, uh, in general. So there is uh, one particular expert uh, that is uh, that maybe some of you recognize if you uh, if you're familiar with the field. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, oh. oh wow okay this one. So you do know who that is? Yeah. So that's uh, Vladimir Vovk, and I I like his uh, his work a lot because uh, of uh, many foundations. Uh, in uh, probability, but also in uh, in sequential prediction and, and conformal inference, all, all topics that he has invented 25 years ago, and that uh, found find a, a tremendous amount of uh, applications and, and interest nowadays. And what I like about uh, his approach to uh, to questioning is uh, to find uh, rigorous hmm, mathematical questions about interaction with black boxes, which I think is extremely relevant in the, uh, in the in now that you have uh, extremely complex systems that do prediction, and sometimes you say, oh yeah, they work, but you have no idea exactly what they are doing. So if you uh, just infer, uh, you, you consider some of these, uh, <coughs> some of these uh, uh, models, uh, train neural networks, whatever, with different parameters, and you want to, uh, to make the best, the best use of what they're, they're doing without knowing what's inside, how you do that? And I think it's a, it's a very uh, important question nowadays. So, um, okay, so uh, in my setting, you want to predict a target value Y. We'll assume that it's real valued. And we have this panel, uh, uh, expert predictions, it's a vector F uh, with K, K elements, which will be uh, observed repeatedly. And I said uh, it can be uh, <coughs> It can be different uh, different settings where you can really try to to uh, to, to predict something in practice. Uh, to predict a time series also it can be dependent in time, <coughs> and um, also it can, the, the experts can be actually statistical models or very complicated models that people have uh, put a lot of uh, know-how into, but you don't know uh, what it is. 
So the goal is, uh, okay, so uh, I will go towards the, uh, review the basics, and of course it's a huge literature since the last 25 years, so I will only look at the basic and try to, to say what is my, my goal here. But uh, so uh, here the, the most basic goal is to try to do as well as the best expert. Uh, in, uh, and this is what you call the so, so, uh, so, okay, we introduce that. So we, uh, we, we measure the, um, the, the quality of a single prediction of, of one expert or one prediction anyway through a loss function. So uh, typically I will consider the squared loss simplest one, but it can be extended to other losses. So uh, think of L F Y as uh, F minus Y squared. And uh, <coughs> you will have sometimes partial access to uh, uh, what I call a training sequence, FT, YT. FT here is the, uh, the whole, uh, well, is uh, in principle the whole sequence of prediction of the experts. But I will have later uh, only partial access to that. And so uh, L, K, T will be the, the loss of prediction of expert K at time P. And my goal, uh, the, the way I will uh, use the experts is to combine them by aggregation, which means by convex combination. So as a, as a user, uh, I will try to, uh, to find a convex combination of weights uh, in the k minus one dimensional complex of these expert prediction and hope that it will, uh, it will uh, do a good prediction. So obviously if I just concentrate on trusting one expert, it will just have weight one and zero otherwise, but I can do more complicated things. And uh, the goal is to adapt my weights to the observations. Uh, you can also see the, the weights as a priority distribution, and in this case you can see that as an average uh, of uh, drawing an expert at random according to these weights, and also as the question what happens if I effectively draw an expert at random and just follow this advice instead of doing the convex combination. Okay, so I will consider the sequential prediction, and like I said, say, I, I don't think I will, okay, depending on the time, I will also consider uh, this, the, 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 the stochastic uh, setting. So in the sequential prediction, what's, uh, so you actually assume that uh, the sequence ft, yt is, is fixed, is not known in advance, is progressively discovered, but it can be uh, anything. And this is uh, partially an adversarial setting, so again, there are a lot of differences here, but it's a uh, an easy, an easy example of an adversarial setting. So in this case, uh, you, uh, you learn and you predict at the same time, which means at same, at, same or, or at, uh, at time t, you will make a prediction, uh, which will be a convex combination of the prediction of the experts, reveal the, the, true, uh, the true label y, the true, uh, and then adapt your weights for the next step. And what is important is that the weights for the next, the, the, the step t, uh, should all, all, all only depend on what you observe up to time t, so uh, the past. And uh, I look at the cumulative loss, which is uh, how much loss you've incurred since the beginning uh, after n steps. So again, you see that wt depends on t, and I normalize by the number of steps n. People don't do always uh, don't don't always do that, but it's because I'm coming from statistics, so uh, I like to normalize things to have uh, something which is uh, like. Uh, uh, an average, although here there is nothing stochastic for now. And the regret is the comparison of this uh, sequential loss, uh, cumulative loss average, with the minimum uh, that you would have had if you had followed the best expert all the time. So in, uh, in hindsight, you can say, oh, maybe I should have uh, just uh, uh, asked the first expert all the time, but you didn't know that in advance. So that's what here, and the regret is how much you've uh, so of course, if you just compare to the best expert, you cannot do better than that in that sense, but you compare yourself to that uh, in the sense that uh, what is the loss that I've incurred by modifying my weights. So I, there are two, two things that are, that are um, uh, two settings that are of interest. So it's called uh, slow and fast rates is the behavior of the regret as a function of the, of the number of steps. So I call slow weight a typically a regret that will go to zero, uh, scaling in one of a square root n, and a fast rate one over n. So uh, sometimes fast rate uh, is also called constant regret, because if you look at cumulative uh, regret multiplied by n, which is uh, not normalized, then actually it is all of one, so it's constant regret. And then slow rate means uh, square root of n. 
So this is why sometimes I can say it's content free grade, but I, what I mean is a fast rate. And you, you, look at the, you want to look at the scaling in the number of experts. So uh, there was uh, this universal strategy called hedge or expert uh, exponential averaging, which is to the following. So you look at uh, what I call L hat KT. It is the cumulative loss of expert uh, K at times T. So how much they have lost uh, by their prediction up until time, time, uh, time T. And uh, exponential aggregation just consists in taking weights that are proportional to exponential minus lambda L hat. So obviously, if you have an expert that is uh, uh, doing very well, much better than the others, uh, it will accumulate and then we'll have a much higher weight. Um, OK, so you can interpret that. I will just keep that uh, as, a, as a pseudo likelihood, or if you wish, as a, as a kind of uh, pseudo posterior, uh, if you are Bayesian. Um, you can also uh, compare this to a kind of Gibbs point of view, uh, where this is an energy. So anyway, so there are a lot of interpretations. And anyway, just to, to point out that it's, it's very natural. And uh, just reviewing here existing results, like some older results, as you see, of Wolf in the 90s, is that if you look at this sequential regret uh, of using this weight, it is bounded uh, up to constant by uh, square root log k divided by n. So it is a slow rate scaling in square root of log k, the number of experts. So it slowly increases with the number of experts, the complexity, but not too fast. And this is a remarkable result because it's true for any sequence. It's not a, it's not a stochastic result. It's not an expectation. It's really for any sequence that I uncover progressively, provided I can access to all the past and compute these weights. This is always true. So this is a very striking result. And this is also true um, in expectation if I draw, so now I introduce some random, if I draw an expert at random. So instead of actually doing the convex combination, I just pick an expert at random, I ask them the prediction. And, uh, and then in expectation, this is true, and also with high probability with respect to this uh, randomization. So now fast rates. So this was flow rates. So fast rates uh, happens typically when you have some kind of strong convexity in the loss. So there is a, a, a large zoo of uh, conditions and losses so that you, have, uh, you can have fast rates. But for me, the, uh, the, basic, uh, the basic property is that if you average two experts or two points, you will tend to have a loss which is strictly smaller than the convex combination. So it's a strong convex, kind of strong convexity property. Turns out the property we're using in that is that one. But again, if you look at the literature, there is a vast discussion about the conditions or general conditions. But here, I will just assume again that it's a square loss and that the prediction and target are bounded so that it is indeed strongly convex and Lipschitz, for example, and you, this, 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 uh, this condition is satisfied. So when you have uh, such conditions, so let's think of the uh, BSL, so bounded square loss. Uh, for just to simplify, then uh, you have fast rate. So before I suggest uh, for this exponential averaging, um, I had lambda, which is proportional to square root of log uh, one over n. For that was for the uh, for slow rate. If you have this strong convexity property or this uh, more general uh, property, then you have a more aggressive strategy, lambda equals one, which means we concentrate more quickly to the uh, experts that are doing well. And in that case, and it's not true if, the, if, if your loss is general, you can have a regret scal scaling in log k over n. So as I said, it is the, called sometimes constant regret. So constant in n, when you multiply by n, you just add up the, uh, the losses. Or in terms of average regret, is 1 over n is num in the number of, uh, of, uh, of steps. OK. So it seems uh, that we are done here, but OK. Here there is a. Slight problem is that uh, this is not true for the randomized version. So if you pick an expert at random, uh, it will not hold. And intuitively, this is clear because I said it has to do with strong convexity. So if I pick uh, an expert at random and, and just look at the average loss, obviously, I will have a linear combination and I will lose this, uh, this average, uh, this uh, strong convexity effect. So somehow, it is to be expected that uh, like if I just pick one, one expert at random according to the weights, this won't work. OK, so now I come to the question that interests me, which is uh, 
prediction with costly or limited expert advice or frugality. So the idea is that uh, if I have a large, large number of experts, so the, the scaling is in, in log case, so I might as well imagine that I maybe I have millions of experts if n is large. But then in principle, to, to compute this strategy, I have to ask all of them to compute the weights and uh, do the aggregation, do the, uh, the complex combination. So uh, the cost, uh, the, the experts, asking an expert can have a cost. It can be a, really a monetary cost if you think of uh, someone who uh, wants to be paid for giving you their predictions. It can be a time cost if you have a machine or a model that, uh, that you have to uh, maybe to, uh, to put some data through. So anyways, you have a lot of experts. If you have a lot of programs, uh, that, that, that surely uh, results in an additional cost. OK. So uh, here I also want to say that maybe there is a different uh, cost between uh, consulting an expert before, uh, before the uh, event happens for the prediction and asking them a posteriori about what was the prediction. Uh, maybe you have more and more time, or maybe it's cheaper to ask in retrospect what was their prediction. So this, I will distinguish between uh, experts who ask uh, just uh, after the fact, or in, 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 in other words, in order to build your weights at the next step, and experts you use really to, uh, to make your actual prediction. So this is an, ex an example, a simple example of frugal learning, uh, in the sense that you want to uh, minimize resources and look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the resources that you, uh, you need to, to reach a certain goal. So here the resource is the, uh, the number of experts you ask. And in some sense, so you can think of the elementary, uh, in this setting, the elementary uh, unit is actually uh, one query to one expert. So I will call that Q later and say, OK, I want to, to look at uh, bounds that ideally would only depend on the number of queries I, I, uh, I have. OK, this is exactly what is, uh, OK, sorry. So this is a little bit more precise, but so what are we looking at is that uh, for the prediction, I will ask in general uh, to, to be able to ask only P expert uh, among my panel to do my prediction. So I can have any, uh, based on any weights on this strategy. And then for the observation, which means for the knowing in retrospect which were the, uh, the, uh, the, the predictions of my experts, I will ask up to m observations at each round. So in general, uh, what is important is m, or, or generally you will have m which is larger than p. So the number of queries uh, that you ask uh, during n rounds of this game is m times n. Also, I have a, a little slide about uh, some comparison to, uh, to bandits, which is uh, something that uh, some, some of you might also be familiar with. So in bandits, it's, uh, it's another kind of sequential games where you, uh, you have uh, a certain number of arms, uh, which are machines, slot machines, and you decide which slot machine you ask. Uh, you, you, uh, you pull each term and you have a, um, a gain at each, each term. So it's different in the sense that uh, for the bandit, you only have to choose one machine. So it would be the case where you can only choose one expert. And you don't have a prediction, really. It's already uh, included in the, uh, in the reward. So re the reward is the analogous with a minus sign, maybe, of my loss. Um, for the expert setting, uh, full expert setting, you observe all experts. Uh, and uh, you can combine them arbitrarily. And then you have this prediction loss, which is relevant because you have to decide what is the loss of a convex combination, which you don't have to do in the bandit setting because it's not authorized. And in a sense, you can ask about intermediate situations between these two screens. Saying, what if I can observe some experts, which here play the role of arms, and you can combine a limited number of, of, of experts each round. So it is a little bit in between these two, uh, two realms. So again, uh, the, the, the goal is, is when is, is typically about fast rates. So the case of, of slow rates had already been studied. Uh, we'll, I will uh, give a, a short, uh, short overview of that. But uh, uh, we are interested in knowing when fast rates are possible in this setting, when you have budgetary constraints, which are this, this M and this P. And what is the influence uh, on the regret? So of course, uh, Fast rates mean the, the, the behavior as a function of the number of rounds n. 
And uh, you also would like to quantify the, the behavior of the regret in function of uh, the parameters you have. And also, if you, uh, so we will have some randomized uh, strategies, picking some several experts at random, and we'd like to have some results in expectation with respect to the randomization, but also hopefully with a high probability. Okay, so uh, just again, sorry. So, so sum them up. So uh, pre at each round, I predict a, uh, a convex combination of p experts. I observe a, a loss of m experts. So there is a little thing that uh, that will uh, appear in some uh, some technicalities is that we. It is natural to say, well, maybe uh, the experts that I'm asking before are, are before the uh, the uh, the round of the game will be observed anyway. So it is included. So I call this the inclusion condition. So mathematically, you could also ask, what if uh, actually I can ask some experts, but I, I, I incur the loss, but I don't never see their advice. So I send them a letter. Uh, I, they, they, uh, so someone combines their, their prediction and does the prediction for me, but I, I, I can't use their, their opinion for future. And so M could be a, a different set of experts. So, so maybe this is not natural, but at least I will refer to this inclusion condition uh, sometimes. So again, uh, m equals p equals k is the full information setting where you observe everything and can use any experts to predict. And m equals p equals 1. And uh, it is the same expert you have to ask and observe. So I see it's true. Is the bandit setting in which you, uh, you pull an arm, you observe it, and gain the, and gain the, the reward at the same time or lose the loss if you uh, take that reward is minus loss. So this is what it looks like if you have a, as a cartoon of uh, uh, if you don't have the inclusion condition, so here I can only combine two experts, which are the uh, purple ones. So I, here I would combine these two experts with some weights, and then uh, look at the uh, look at the value y and incur the loss. And then after that, I can observe up to four experts, which are not necessarily the same here. And uh, when it's at the same time blue and purple, it means that I use it for prediction and I observe it. And so, okay, so this is the, the, the round, uh, the, how, how, it, uh, how it works. And I have to design a strategy to find at each time the, uh, the purple, some purple and some blue squares to, to ask for prediction and observation in order to predict the, the last row. So, okay, so the slow rate setting, so I have no assumptions on, uh, on, the, uh, on the loss function. And uh, this was already treated in a in paper by Seldin et al. 10 years ago in 2014. So it is based on variations of, of this exponential uh, averaging strategy. So the idea is that, uh, okay, I follow the same strategy as before, except I don't fully observe the loss of all experts. I have only partially observed the, uh, the experts up to now, according to some strategy. So what I do is that uh, instead of uh, looking to the true losses, I take L hat, and L hat is some kind of an estimate of their loss. If they, uh, if they, uh, if they haven't been, uh, if they haven't been observed. Oh. So modulo this, so if I replace, so this is the algorithm, say so I replace this, uh, this losses, uh, true losses L that are not observed by these pseudo losses L hat that I can compute from whatever I observed. And, uh, okay, uh, I have these weights and I draw one expert at random according to, to this, uh, to this weight and I use their prediction. So here it's a random, I mean, uh, I mean uh, my goal here is the, the, uh, the slow rate setting so I can just pick an expert at random. And if I, if M is strictly larger than one, I uh, say I additionally observe M minus one expert, which are drawn according, uh, uniformly at random, uh, uh in the rest. So the formula for the loss uh, for L hat is this one. So if it's uh, actually not, so OT is the set of observed experts, including the, the one you have used for prediction. So if, uh, if an expert I is in OT, L hat is not in OT, L hat is zero. And otherwise, it is this, uh, this factor time, time its loss. What is this? It is no, nothing else than a kind of important sampling. So. Uh, since you know that you have a certain probability of not observing it, when you observe it, you, uh, up, you upweight their loss so that in average of observing or non-observing, it will be. So it is an unbiased estimate of L. 
and it is always observable. Okay, very well. And it depends. Uh, so okay, so this is a reasonably uh, reasonably uh, reasonably sensible strategy, and they have proved uh, these authors that provided you have the uh, lambda, which is your tem inverse temperature temp parameter in the exponential weights, uh, proportional to one over square root of n, like uh, like in the uh, the previous setting, the one full observation. Uh, but you uh, multiply it by square root of m. Then you have this uh, this inequality on the regret, and this is uh, since I draw at random, this must be an expectation, but it's also in, in uh, with high probability. So okay, what has changed is still a slow rate, one over in the number of of, uh, of rounds, one over square root n, and now. Um, and now I have one of a, so if I, if I look at this, instead of uh, the number of rounds, I have actually the number of queries, n times n. So it is decreasing not in the number of rounds, but in the number of, uh, of queries and total queries. I can interpret it that way. But OK, so that's nice, because uh, I have less information, so it's slower by a factor, uh, factor k. But uh, otherwise, I recover also the, the full information setting. And OK, so I have a. Reasonable pictures. So now we have this uh, this picture. It's uh, so p and m. So again, p equals m equals one is the bandit setting, which is well established. So here the uh, optimal regret scale has screwed k over n. Um, if I have p equals one and uh, and m uh, okay, and m equals k is the full information setting in which I can only ask one expert, but I say that's okay because I can put it at grow it at random. And in the case where I can also only observe m expert per round less than k, then I have these two bounds which uh, appeared in this uh, work of Seldin that I mentioned. So there is a small gap between upper and lower bound. Uh, it's often the case that you have a log. Uh, logarithmic difference between upper and lower bounds. Okay, uh, if you are experts of the field, you know in the bandit setting there was uh, some uh, some work of Anibert and and Bubeck in the 2010 that actually uh, in the bandit setting closed the gap. But here I will not talk about that gap at all. I will say okay, there is uh, low upper lower bounds up to some gap possibly. Okay, so this was the slow rate setting. Uh, for p equals one, because you only have one expert. If you have, if you can combine all experts, not uh, not at random, you can combine them with weights, and you observe everything. So it's p equals m equals k. For information setting, this is Vovk, and this is, uh, as I mentioned, fast rate log k over n. And so this is the realm we want to explore. What what here in this intermediate case? Uh, can we still achieve fast rates or not? As you see, if you have p equals 1, it's not surprising, but uh, you cannot achieve fast rate. So we also, uh, so this is our proposition. We also uh, take uh, the exp exponential uh, weight averaging uh, strategy based on pseudo losses. I will detail what is the difference between the pseudo losses of Seldin and Al, but they are, they are slightly different, but the principle is the same. And uh, the first minor modification is instead of uh, asking, uh, so now you have the, your weights based on some pseudo losses that we specify, and you want to ask some, um, some experts for prediction. So intuitively, if you want to use a strong convexity and look the property of some convexity to exploit it to in order to have fast rate, you need at least two experts. Well, it turns out to be true. So it, you just need to have two experts to reach what we want. So you will draw two experts at random according to these weights independently. And you will average a prediction. So this is the minimal uh, form of some convexity that, uh, that you, you will need. So you pick their midpoints. And uh, if you have a, a larger budget for observation, for, for future uh, determination of the weights, you will uh, ask uh, m minus 2 additional experts, which are drawn as before uniformly at random. And the pseudo losses will be observed, uh, will be determined from these observed uh, losses only. Um, okay, so. 
why, uh, so why, why, what about these pseudo losses? So we do a li something a little bit more, uh, or slightly, slightly smarter, let's say, than uh, the, the, the idea to put loss to zero if you don't observe them and just rewind them up if you observe them. So we use this following. So for, for estimating uh, one expert, um, the pseudo losses, uh, you will uh, look at the expert that you have picked. So you remember in this in the first uh, first step you have uh, you have picked uh, it an expert it uh, index it with respect to these pseudo losses. So instead of being uh, your your default prediction or default loss instead of being zero, it is lit the exp the loss of the other expert. And you modify it if you actually turned out that you observe uh, this loss. So you say, okay, then I will modify. And again, it is a modification. Uh, if you look at it, which is uh, meant to be uh, unbiased. So if you uh, uh, yes, okay, sorry, yes, this is the probability of drawing uh, of drawing an expert. So you, uh, if it is uh, unobserved, it is just the uh, the loss of the other expert and. If it is observed, it is the, the, the difference of the observation to the, uh, the, the first expert you have drawn times uh, this, this factor, which is exactly the inverse probability of uh, drawing it. So it is the same, uh, the same strategy uh, of a little bit of, um, uh, of important sampling, except uh, now you, you have a, you center instead of centering in, in zero or you, you center in, a, in the first expert you have actually observed. And the second modification is maybe a little bit more obscure, and this is mainly important for uh, when you want things with high probability. So you actually downweight a little bit this first L hat uh, by a factor that involves lambda, which is your, your factor in the exponential, your inverse temperature. And this uh, square difference between uh, you, what you observe, uh, what the true loss of x dot i is, and the, uh, your default value, which is a uh, the loss of the first expert you have picked to the squared. And this is with negative one. So this is a little bit, uh, can be interpreted as an anti-penalty, which means that you, uh, you uh, discount a little bit the estimated weight by a term which uh, typically is something like uh, some kind of variability. So if, if the experts turn out to be exactly the same, you don't discount. If there is a lot of variability towards the expert, this will don't tend to be positive and you will discount the loss. So this is a phenomenon or this is an aspect of what people or people could call uh, sometimes uh, optimism in the face of uncertainty. So if you have a lot of uncertainty, sometimes you, in this case, it's uh, you take a little bit uh, an optimistic weight that maybe you, if you have heard uh, about estimating the loss, maybe it's the, uh, Maybe the loss is, uh, could be a little bit lower than that. Okay, so and and this has to do with uh, with variance control. So maybe let me just uh, tell our results. So the result is that uh, you have if you do uh, if you apply this uh, uh, these uh, these strategies. So here I will take m greater than three. I will comment on this later. So, and uh, p, as I said, equals two. So we could have here. There is no difference if you take p larger than two and p equals two because you, uh, you say oh, two experts are sufficient to to predict. Then, um, with a choice uh, of lambda, which is of order m of k, which is similar to the the one you had in the full information and, and fast rate setting, except it's multiplied by uh, by m. Uh, the expected regret, so it's expected because we have this randomization, this, uh, this internal randomization of my algorithm, picking the experts at random, is uh, proportional to uh, k divided uh, 1 over n, uh, k log k divided by m, so it is a fast rate in the number of, uh, of, uh, of rounds. Again, constant regret if you prefer to, to uh, scale by n, and this can be uh, written this way in the number of queries. And maybe the mathematically the most interesting uh, result is that one, uh, the second one, which is to say that, uh, so the first one you use just the, the pseudo losses L hat with this smart centering. And the second one, you use also this slight discounting. 
And this is relevant to have results with high probability. So, uh, so this is interesting to know that with high probability, with probability 1 minus delta, you have the, the, essentially the same qualitative the same bound as in expectation, with a log inverse probability coming in. And, uh, okay, this is kind of, I think, interesting because uh, the, uh, well, usually uh, expectation can, can hide uh, some, some larger deviations and this, sometimes it had been shown uh, in some, not this setting, but other settings that if you look at results in expectation uh, for, for some strategies, they don't uh, translate into results uh, in deviation. Sometimes you can show that, uh, you can exhibit uh, some examples which more with random data, where you have expected regret is a 1 over n, so full information, but the deviations uh, are at least, or with positive probability, at least a 1 over, or the 1 over square root n. This is work of Rudy Bear in 2010s also. So anyway, so this is, uh, I think, remarkable, and the, uh, okay, so the key to, uh, to obtain, an, uh, in a nutshell, to obtain fast rates in this case is uh, to have a second order uh, control, so uh, involving a kind of variance term. So in expectation, it's, it's some, uh, based on some, uh, some uh, calculation of the expectation and modifying the, the usual proof uh, in a way that, uh, that is a little bit more precise. So it is not very long. And uh, in, uh, in high probability, then uh, you need to be more, more, uh, more there it's more technical and you need to, need to, to use uh, martingale inequalities to control precisely the deviation of, the, of a martingale uh, and use second order. So if you know uh, the, the bounded difference inequality, it's not sufficient. You have to, to have a second order Bernstein types and valid for all time. So it gets more technical. You have a lot of terms and it's a little bit of a small miracle that if you do the, the discount, then it cancels variance term and you, you, uh, you cancel all the terms that you don't want and it's, uh, it gives you what you want. So anyway, so I won't tell more right now, but let's say that is, that is the, uh, the one which I think is uh, mathematically the, mo the most interesting. So let's come back to this uh, consideration about uh, algorithmic complexity, which I think is not, uh, not very uh, difficult, but interesting. You could ask, okay, so if, uh, if you, uh, you can ask if you, your goal uh, or your cost is actually a kind of storage or computation, computation cost is very, okay, nice. You don't have to ask all experts. But at least if you have to update all the weights for your million of experts, it's, it's, uh, it's one, 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 a little big O of one million for each step to update all the weights and normalize them. And in fact, it's not the case because, uh, uh, because you use actually for the weights, we use uh, exponential, uh, exponential uh, weight normalization. So we could, uh, we could actually, uh, at, each time step, take all the pseudo losses and shift them all by the same quantity. And when we normalize, this will go away. So, so this means that actually uh, we can remove this, uh, this first one. We can, if, if, we, if I remove this first term, of course, it's maybe less, less intuitive why it's not an unbiased estimate. But if I put this in the exponential weights, it will, it will be the same because this will be result in a factor that is, where, that is, uh, that is everywhere there. So instead, I have to just to, to store this difference uh, L tilde minus L, uh, my reference one. And then it can be written this way. And I see that uh, the advantage is that uh, if uh, I don't observe it, so for example, so that I don't, I don't observe, then this, uh, this difference is zero. So if I just store the L change, um, my update, I only have to update the, the observed that I, the, the except that I, the, ex, the experts that I observe. So if I observe M experts, I will know only have to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to update L of M of this quantity. So the algorithmic complexity is not O of K, the number of uh, big O of K, the number of experts, but big O of M, the number of observed experts. So you need only to update the, uh, this, this pseudo pseudo losses for observed experts. And then uh, if you look at what the cost is uh, for, for drawing, for normalizing and drawing an expert at random according to the normalized weights, then uh, you can, if, you, uh, if you're a little bit clever about the, uh, the storage of the weights, for example, by, uh, by a tree, you can say that uh, drawing at random uh, 
so updating the weights and uh, drawing at random uh, one expert according to these exponential weights only takes a uh, big O of m log k. So it's uh, it's nice because the computational complexity also scales with an above uh, with your budget. And finally, so what time is it? Okay, fine. yes. Okay, so then, then I'm fine. And and to to conclude, so what is interesting is also to have lower bounds and to say, oh, again, up to logarithmic factor, it's uh, still a gap here. So um, and the lower bounds kind of match the uh, upper bound here, up to these log factors. So again, uh, for this uh, in this case of uh, so everything is, is true uh, here for the loss, which is the, uh, the, the square loss still. So if either p equals 1 or m equals 1, you cannot hope to have a better, uh, to have a fast uh, decay in the number of queries or in the number of rounds. So as I mentioned, if you, um, if you only pick one expert to predict, it is intuitively clear that uh, uh, you lose the, uh, the, the strong convexity. And so you cannot do better than, than fast rate, at least it is the intuition and it was known, uh, the, the kind of bound was known before that if you just pick one expert each time, then uh, the best you can hope in general in one, one over square root of n. Maybe it's a, a little bit more surprising, or I don't know, that in the weird case where you uh, can combine an arbitrary number of experts for prediction, but for you only allowed to observe one of them or the loss of one of them and each round to build your future weights, then you cannot hope anyway uh, also to, uh, to have fast rates. So we need really to accept at least two experts. Um, it has to do with this variancing to, uh, to, to, to compare them. You have to compare the experts at the same round somehow. So this is maybe a little bit more, more surprising that for m equals 1 also this is the true. And, uh, as soon as m uh, and p are larger than 2, then uh, you have a lower bound which is uh, smaller, but is correspond to this fast rate, which is matched for m equals greater than 3 for us. So there's a little bit of... Uh, so I didn't mention here the uh, inclusion condition. It is... Uh, but maybe it's the next... Yeah. So this is how we uh, complete the, the, the table I was asking... Uh, I was telling about in the, the beginning. So this is the, uh, the new region that I was interested in. So if m equals 1, my lower bound is uh, square root k over q, it is the, the slow rate, and the upper bound is square root of k over q. Uh, this is not new, the, the upper bound, but uh, the lower bound is new for m equals 1. So this is this kind of weird situation, but it's still interesting mathematically to say that. To say that. So if I have... Uh, m uh, larger than 2 and q is larger than 2, then I have this fast rate. Uh, okay, so I have a lower bound of k divided by q, number of experts divided by number of total number of queries, which is, I recall you, m times n. And here, so I didn't enter into the detail, I didn't enter into the details, but we have a... So there is a slightly annoying situation, or maybe it's an interesting situation, actually, where m equals p equals 2, and you have the inclusion condition. So it means that, according to my strategy, I have to pick two experts at random. And then I don't have any budget left to ask anybody else. So I don't, I can explore at random the experts. I'm kind of, so this is like a kind of bandit setting. I call this the bi-bandit setting because you have, a, <laughs> you have to, you can pull two arms or two experts and you, you average them and you can not do something else. So in this case, we have actually a slightly modified strategy that I didn't want to describe. But uh, uh, in this case, you have, uh, you have, unfortunately, we still have a, an extra factor k. Okay, so if uh, you don't have the inclusion condition, then it's okay. You can just put two, ask two experts and then observe two, two experts at random. So that's, that you can completely disconnect the prediction and the observation. So that's fine and you have the bound. So anyway, so if you're interested in a mathematical conundrum, you can ask, can we actually uh, close the factor k in uh, this bi-bounded case. Well, so anyway, and uh, so this was m, okay, so m greater than 3 is the, uh, 
It's the general setting. So here it's just a specific particular case of m equals 2 where you have a distinction between with this IC, IC condition. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter because you can al al always observe at least one more expert that you haven't used for predictions. So it's Okay, so uh, yeah, so in conclusion, uh, I think it's an interesting scenario for frugal learning. I, uh, when you have a limited budget, I think uh, fast rates are interesting. I was interested in fast rate as a, initially more as a statistician, as a, from point of view of statistical learning, where this also comes up. And thanks to Elmedi, brought me to say, okay, it is also, uh, we can look into that for, for the sequential prediction, which is, has been studied all, as well. And so the take-home message is that uh, in order to have fast rate in the number of queries, it is necessary and sufficient to uh, able uh, to uh, to predict a combination of at least or two experts, and to to be able to observe at least two experts. And if you can only use, uh, predict or uh, observe one expert per round, then uh, you cannot obtain fast rates. And we have the, the, the results in expectation with respect to this randomization, but also with high probability, which means in any realization, you don't have to repeat the experiment uh, with uh, many of your own randomization. If you do, uh, you just pick the, the dice at random to pick the experts with high probability, it will have the, the desired uh, behavior. And so there are some loose ends remaining. Uh, so the natural uh, regret bound happens to be uh, k uh, number of experts divided by number of total number of queries, m times n. So you have this logarithmic gap that uh, is, uh, in general, quite uh, annoying and difficult to close. And also, the, this case that I mentioned, when you have m equals p equals 2, you can only observe and use uh, two experts, and they are the same. And in that case, I don't know if we can uh, lose the extra factor k. OK, so then I just finish here. So I wanted to possibly to talk, uh, talk about uh, another setting, but I think I'm it's good to end here, and uh, I thank you. And just to mention, this is a paper in the uh, conference hall from two years ago. So thank you. Any questions? No questions. Yes. In your setup, the expert uh, uh, not necessarily models, but they can, they can be anything. But did you consider the case where you have, for instance, several models and you are updating uh, them? Or this is another set of Yes, I, as I, I know what you mean. Well, uh, <laughs> it's a good question. So if you are in a stochastic setting, the setting which I didn't cover, uh, you assume that uh, each expert has a fixed distribution, or the, the joint distribution of the expert is fixed. Uh, and um, and repeated ID, so then there is no update. And so, or to include some update of the models, you'd have to uh, to to do something else. In the sequential prediction, uh, because it's a fixed sequence, yeah, you can have updating as you want. I mean, you still compare to the best. Uh, so what what this doesn't cover is like switching of experts, saying oh maybe for the first uh, hundred days, uh, expert number one was was better, but after a while, in particular, if I train my model. It turns out the second model was better. On the long time, you will do as well as the, the best overall. So if expert two was very bad at the beginning but became uh, significantly better, you will do as well as that. It can be uh, for this reason because it's uh, just for sequential uh, fixed sequence. It can be non-stationary or it can be random data, non-stationary, updated. But uh, yeah, so I know is this is answering your question. Or? Because that's related to mixture of experts and model. Like, uh, the losses that you can use, for instance, uh, if you are high level. Yes. For instance, for training uh, language models, or if you have a recently, like. Yeah, so, so they use, sorry. They use like mixture of experts. Uh, yeah, so. As I said, so mixture of experts, yeah, so apparently a lot of you are familiar with it, but I so to repeat, it's like you can have very complex models that maybe are trained according to the time, and you have, can ask also more, more complex questions, but the, uh, the beauty of it uh, for me is really to say, uh, when I speak with, speak with experts of uh, random networks and say, oh, I put this and that and put this latest thing, I say, okay, so I... I can assure you that the, the, the mixture will have this basic property, so it's a good idea. And 
And I think it is okay. So I know it was used for large language models, but I know it is used for uh, I don't know, like electricity prediction uh, consumption. So they have uh, in R and D they have the their in-house models. So they have different models to predict, and maybe you could come up with a different mod method, and they want to use it, but they are not too confident. So you can always put a mixture of experts, and generally it has good results uh, from what I hear. Maybe not this very basic uh, <laughs> version, but at least yes. Yes, and can you integrate uh, like contextual information? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that's a, a good question. So I I don't know. <laughs> uh, so contextual information means that you have uh, so so you mean the choice of the ways depending on contextual information, right? Because uh, so each expert can naturally could use some external information that they have. But here the question is more about uh, depending on the weight or on, on the contextual information you can adapt your your weights. Uh, so yeah, so I I, I don't know. Uh, in particular, I uh, think the, the the question of fast rates is becomes a little bit more more complicated because you uh, uh, you combine. Uh, well, okay. So I, I don't want to enter uh, too much into it, but uh, it's a, it's a good question, and I uh, uh, I. Uh, I'm not sure I can uh, I, I can answer it directly. Also, uh, the question is the oh yeah okay the the question is the regret with respect to what? Yes, that was uh, my other question. Like, if you integrate uh, contextual information, does the notion of regret change? Or like well, typically, if you have some contextual information, I guess you would have to compare against, uh, for example, uh, a weight which is uh, I don't know a linear combination or uh, which are linear combinations of your contextual information given as a vector. So you compete against a larger class of, uh, and typically in this case, uh, in this kind of case, I mean, very roughly, I think, uh, if you have contextual information of dimension D, uh, so then uh, your set of pre possible predictors becomes actually uh, the, uh, the weights or the combination of, of experts depending on, on X, if you are only linear combination. So instead of having log K, if you want to have fast rates, you would have, I think, uh, D. OK, I'm not sure. So D over N, and whether or not you can keep it logarithmic. So sometimes you can keep it logarithmic before the slow rates. So the question of, of, of fast rates is, uh, is more difficult. OK, so sorry, I'm very imprecise because I, I'm not exactly sure about the, the right answer. but. Uh, Okay, thank you then. Thank you very much, Professor Blanchard.